Hello everyone. Today we'll take a comprehensive look at the four major types of railway surveys used in planning and constructing railway lines. These include 1. Traffic Survey 2. Reconnaissance Survey 3. Preliminary Survey 4. Final Location Survey Let us begin by understanding what a traffic survey is. A traffic survey is a detailed study carried out to assess and forecast the movement of traffic in a given area. This process plays a critical role in the planning and development of railway lines. The primary objectives of conducting a traffic survey are twofold. First, when dealing with the construction of new railway lines, traffic surveys help forecast traffic prospects. This enables planners to project the most promising route to be taken the category of line that needs to be constructed. Second, for existing railway lines, traffic surveys help in assessing the volume of traffic. This assessment is crucial to determine the traffic facilities that need to be provided or upgraded. Traffic surveys are not conducted in isolation. They are usually undertaken alongside to other types of surveys. Reconnaissance surveys Preliminary Engineering Surveys This is important because These combined surveys allow planners to consider both the technical feasibility and the costs involved in alternative proposals. This integrated approach leads to well-informed recommendations regarding route selection and facility planning. In summary, Traffic surveys are vital for both new and existing railway lines. They help in route selection, line classification, and facility planning. They must be carried out in conjunction with technical surveys to ensure practical and cost-effective solutions. Let's start by understanding what a reconnaissance survey is. A reconnaissance survey involves a rough and rapid investigation of an area. Its main goal is to determine the technical feasibility and approximate cost of one or more potential routes for a proposed railway line. This survey is conducted based on a general examination of the region. Here's how it's done. It relies on existing resources, particularly Contoured Survey of India maps Other available materials relevant to the region Unlike detailed field surveys, the reconnaissance survey does not involve careful field investigation. Only simple instruments are used to quickly estimate distances and elevations. These include Prismatic compass Clinometer Other similar tools The emphasis is on speed and approximation, rather than precision. In modern practices, there's an important alternative to extensive fieldwork, aerial photography. When suitable aerial photographs are available, much of the field investigation can be minimized or even eliminated. This is achieved through stereoscopic studies of the photographs, a method that gives a three-dimensional view of the terrain. Any site inspections, if required, are carried out only to supplement the photographic study. To summarize, the reconnaissance survey is a quick, cost-effective method to examine the feasibility of proposed railway routes. It is based largely on existing maps and rapid field checks using basic tools. The use of aerial photography has significantly enhanced the efficiency of this survey type. Let's start by understanding what a preliminary survey is. The preliminary survey is a more detailed investigation of the route or routes that were selected during the earlier reconnaissance survey. Its main purpose is to enable planners to make a close estimate of the probable cost of constructing the proposed railway line. Let's look at the key features of how this survey is conducted. The survey involves a detailed instrumental examination, but it's important to note. Staking out of the alignment with a theodolite is not required at this stage. The findings of the preliminary survey, combined with the results of the traffic survey, help in making the decision about whether the line should be built or not. In some cases, however, the railway board may require a more detailed estimate based on a final location survey before giving approval to start construction. Just like in the reconnaissance survey, the use of aerial photographs can significantly reduce the amount of fieldwork required. 
when suitable aerial photographs are available, the survey can be done using photogrammetric methods. This involves creating contoured strip maps by analyzing the photographs. These maps help in determining the optimum alignment of the railway line. Typically, this is done using photographs on a scale of 1, 10, 0, 0, 0, or using images that are five times the scale of the currently available photographs to get the best possible accuracy. To summarize, the preliminary survey is a crucial step that bridges the gap between reconnaissance and actual construction. It provides detailed cost estimates based on careful fieldwork or aerial data. It plays a major role in deciding whether a project proceeds to the next phase. Photogrammetric techniques can be used to efficiently plan alignments when suitable aerial imagery is available. At the end of today's session let's know about the fourth and final type, the Final Location Survey. The Final Location Survey is typically conducted after an investment decision has been made. In other words, this survey is a post-investment investigation. Its main purpose is to prepare working details for construction and to allow for accurate costing, especially in specific cases where high precision is essential. Now let's talk about the key differences between a final location survey and a preliminary survey. In a preliminary survey, the alignment is studied but not permanently marked. In contrast, during the final location survey, the alignment that has been finally selected must be fully staked out on the ground. This is done using precision instruments like a theodolite or electronic distance measuring instruments, EDMI. This ensures that the line is marked with high accuracy, suitable for the actual construction phase. The final location survey must be more detailed in both its reporting and outputs. The survey report must be full and comprehensive. It must also include detailed plans and sections of the selected alignment. These documents are crucial for construction teams, project budgeting, and for overall execution and quality control. To wrap up, the final location survey is conducted after the decision to build has been taken. It provides the final working details, accurate ground markings, and precise cost estimates. This phase uses advanced instruments and results in a fully detailed technical report with plans and sections. That concludes our lecture on the final location survey, and with that, our overview of the four major types of railway surveys, traffic, reconnaissance, preliminary, and final location surveys. Thank you. Now it is your test time. You can see a question on the screen. You can solve this question, the concept you have received through the lecture. Let's try first. After going through the options, you can get the answer. And the right answer is option 4. Thank you.